Hello everyone, welcome to my floss tube channel. My name is Jessie Lee and I'm coming at you with video number 26. I am wearing a very old pair of my grandma's clip-on earrings today. I have had these earrings in my jewelry box for quite a while, but I've never worn them. But I recently bought myself a new shirt for springtime and I thought these earrings kind of matched. So I thought I would try wearing them in this video today. My grandma did not have pierced ears, so all of her earrings were clip-ons like these. And my grandma also had pretty large ears, which my mom inherited, but I did not. So as you can see, these big chunky earrings are barely hanging on my teeny little earlobes, but I enjoy them. And I think the fact that they're vintage is super cool. I'm sorry that this video is a little bit late. I have just been trudging my way out of a major funk that I've been in these past couple weeks. In my last video, I told you guys that my kids were about to go on spring break and I was super excited for some fun family time. That did not end up happening because we all got sick. It wasn't COVID, but I do suspect it was actually influenza because in addition to icky head cold symptoms, we all had really bad fevers that lasted several days. It was miserable and it was extra disappointing because the weather outside was absolutely beautiful and we couldn't even leave the house. And then the week afterwards when we were feeling better and my kids were going back to school and we we're all just trying to regroup, the weather got absolutely shitty and that just put me deeper down in the dumps. Um, spring break, their previous school year was also a total bust and it's just super frustrating. I've noticed that it kind of seems to be a pattern in my life that anytime I'm really looking forward to something or I feel like I'm about to make major progress in some area of my life, everything just kind of falls apart. I think that's actually part of why stitching has become so important to me and <laughs> why I'm kind of a hard ass about making steady progress on all of my projects. It's something that I can control. <laughs> Come hell or high water, it's usually pretty manageable to sit down and make at least a couple of stitches on a whip. But these past couple of weeks, I've even lost my stitchy bug a little bit. <laughs> I've mostly just been moping around watching TikTok videos. A demon spawn who's got four paws, who likes to shit into a box with fluffy fur and eyes like a biter. I'm a small tiger. Anyway, I have just been trying to figure out what to do next that would be satisfying and give me a fresh start and lift my spirits. So I decided that now would be an okay time to spend a little pile of cash that I've managed to save up. Every time I go grocery shopping, I withdraw just a little bit of cash just for me that I squirrel away in a secret spot in the house. <laughs> and. I don't do this for any particular reason other than it makes me feel good. And it's no secret that I'm saving this money because Tim and I actually both jokingly refer to it as my leaving money. <laughs> Clearly, we are both pretty secure in our relationship to call it that. <laughs> as of now, I actually have two ideas of how I could spend my leaving money. <laughs> and the first is painting my living room. When we first got our house, I had to choose paint colors in a rush, and I have never been happy with the gray that I picked for our living room. It's just a little too dark, and it's kind of dreary, especially in the winter time. And after living here almost four years, it's about time to do something fresh. My other idea is to get myself a manual die cutting machine. Now, Paper crafting is really not my thing, but I still see how being able to make my own die cuts could be really fun and really handy. I'm especially interested in making my own aperture cards, which are basically like greeting cards that have cutouts in them so you can frame things like photos or cross stitch. I think it could be really nice to be able to make my own aperture cards so I could cross stitch some smalls and turn them into greeting cards for my friends. And I do plan on making cross stitch cards for my kids teachers again this year. So that's an immediate project that I would be able to experiment using a new die cutting machine for. I also think it's a possibility for me to 
die cut, a whole variety of aperture cards and other little supplies that could be useful to other cross stitchers and maybe start a little Etsy shop. I feel excited and inspired when I mull over this idea, but I have a lot of doubts too. I I'm not very comfortable with the idea of being a businesswoman. I'm not sure if I'm really cut out for that, but it would make a big difference to my family if I could find a way to make a little bit of money and I don't want to work for the man. <laughs> and also, I feel like everybody and their sister has a cricket machine these days. So I don't actually know how marketable what I could literally crank out on a manual die cutter would be. So I would really appreciate it if you guys gave me a little input if this idea of mine to start an Etsy shop selling card making supplies geared towards cross stitchers, is that a good idea or is that just something I shouldn't even fuss with? Let me know. Anywho, let me show you my whips now. The project that I've spent the most time on these past couple of weeks is one you haven't seen in a while, and that is my Autumn Cat Sampler by Nancy Rossi. Here's the design, and here is what I've stitched. I worked on this middle section here. I got all the crosses done on the apple tree. I'll show it to you a little closer. Those ruby red apples are so pretty. It was so fun to stitch in those colors. And I am stitching this on 28 count white Monaco and all the called for DMC. And I'm just missing a little Oriole bird right in the section. And once I stitch that pretty little guy, I will backstitch all the details of this top section up here. And that'll be really pretty and satisfying. I'm really happy that this design has Orioles in it because I think Orioles are beautiful birds and I have Orioles visit my yard every summer. They really adore the mulberry tree in my yard and they love to come and eat all the berries in the summertime. So now I associate Orioles with mulberries and I associate mulberry trees with home. My grandma had a mulberry tree in her yard. So when I lived with her as a little kid, I would stuff my face full of mulberries straight from the tree every summertime. And a couple times my grandma and I actually picked a lot of mulberries and made homemade jam with them. So those are some really good memories. And then when Tim and I bought our first house together, it had a mulberry tree in the yard too. Unfortunately though, that mulberry tree was planted right next to our driveway, so it would drop rotten berries all over the cement and our cement was just stained purple and red, so I would not recommend having a mulberry tree next to concrete or your house or your roof. It stained our garage roof really bad too, so I was happy to have that mulberry tree, but we didn't enjoy it as much. But now we've moved into this house. This is the home we'll be staying in for quite a long time. And there happens to be a mulberry tree in our yard here too. It is a white mulberry tree, which is pretty interesting. So we don't have those yucky staining red berries falling down on the ground all the time. But the Orioles and birds love the white mulberries. I love seeing the tree. It is just beautiful. And it just represents home to me. I think it's so cool that my grandma's house and then both houses that me and Tim have lived in together all had mulberries. Of course, I've also worked on my temperature patterns by Sarah the Stitch and Mommy, although I have gotten a little bit behind because I haven't been feeling well, but it's okay, I know I'll catch up. The first one is temperature butterflies. Here is mine. As you can see, the March butterfly is turning yellow because it's been getting warmer around here. Even though the weather has mostly been gloomy, it is warmer in temperature. So I've gotten to stitch some yellow shades that I haven't gotten to use yet. They look pretty interesting. I am having so much fun with this piece. I wish it didn't freak my camera out so much so you could see how cool it looks in real life. And then there's my temperature walk with me. I am stitching this for my in-laws who live in Florida and the temperatures, of course, don't fluctuate down there a whole lot. So my paw prints are still all looking pretty green, but they're a little more yellow than they have been in the past. So that's kind of fun. And then, in spite of having the flu, I did manage to stitch a finish. 
and I am so proud and honored to show it to you. It is the Fox Family by Stitchy Princess Black, who is a Ukrainian cross-stitch designer, and I stitched her beautiful pattern in solidarity with her and her home country of Ukraine. And I absolutely love how it turned out. It is quite dainty. It's just a little over five inches square. And I stitched this on 32 count vintage stormy night Lugana with all of the called for DMC plus one shade of thread that I added. I changed the little bird in the tree into a red belly woodpecker. So I chose a red thread for the little cap on his head. And then I stitched the berries on the tree in red to tie him in. The berries were originally charted in the orange like the foxes, but otherwise I stitched this completely as charted. And I think it turned out looking so cozy and pretty. I just love it. And I am so excited to turn this into an FFO. I already ordered a custom frame for it from Etsy. This piece is just very special to me. And of course, I am praying for peace in Ukraine. Well, that is all I have to share with you in this video today. I guess it's going to be short and sweet. And I'm sorry that this one was less about cross stitch and more just me griping about life lately. But I do have a question of the week for you guys. <laughs> what is your go-to comfort when you're in a funk? Let me know in the comments. And of course, I wish you all nothing but good health and sunshine. And of course, God loves you and I love you. And happy stitching. Bye-bye. With shiny scales and a sticky tongue, who likes to dine on cricket guts, who basks all day with a beard like a wizard, I'm a cute lizard.